Hello, in this video we're looking at an endgame build for the Hunter using the Sword and the Spirit stat because for some reason Hunters get as much Spirit as Void Knight and the only two jobs to get more Spirit than them are White Mage and Sage. And so we're going to try to take advantage of all this Spirit and even some of the agility. But here's a problem. Hunter enhances your physical damage in a separate bucket. Uh, the bypass enemy resistance bucket or mighty strikes bucket and a lot of the stat bonus spirit combo abilities are magical but we're still going to just try this out anyway just to see how this uh, pans out so we can either go with the machinist or gunslinger because i don't have buff duration up uh, the gunslinger does make sense to me on this route because I might only be getting 50 stacks sometimes and other times I might have enough opportunity to get all the way up to 99 stacks but I need to find a way to refresh my stacks and for that I either need the enemy to be very aggressive or I need to have no trials on with Lightbringer spamming. Uh, but Analyze helping out with this separate damage bucket that multiplies with the, all the damage dealt across your gear and master points. So we're going to see if we can squeeze power out of that with all of our spirit. Uh, looking at our gear effects, we have Hunter just stacked up uh, through the roof. And um, that gives us strength, agility, and most of all, it actually gives us spirit. So, because uh, on, on a job that has those stats. So, that's sort of strange, but we're, we're doing it. And then we have Hunter 400% so that every hit we do, we get a flat amount of uh, MP back. And then just as a side effect for the break damage route, um, Hunter 600% is helping out with the break damage route. Once we start exploiting an enemy's weakness, we get some extra break damage based on the agility. Uh, it's it's not a super amount with the low amount of agility that we have, but uh, it's it's there. It's just it's just going to happen. And then we have Sword Fighter. I, I got it for the four hundred percent and also the two fifty percent. So two fifty percent, you leap towards the enemy in a sense, or well, not leap, zoom towards them, so that we get in range to do our next combo ability. A lot of enemies don't know how to respond to that, so you might end up dodging an attack in the process. And then uh, Swordmaster or uh, Swordfighter 400% increases your damage dealt roughly by 40% when you're doing a sword combo ability. And that damage dealt also increases your combo, I'm sorry, your break damage dealt. And then we also get access to Sacred Blade. Sacred Blade. Uh, so next we have the Swordfighter 600% to help us keep our MP costs down because we do not have, uh, we, we, we get MP back from like maybe two different ways, by smacking the enemy and by uh, soul shielding, which you won't see me do very much soul shielding, um, even though I really should be. Uh, next we have, uh, I'm sorry, specific to the build, we have Tyrant 400% so that every hit once the enemy has a status ailment critical hits and that helps us with the heart shot route on, on the machinist allowing us to build our analyze stacks even faster along with a uh, tyrant 50 percent and 120 percent helping out with status ailment accumulation and then for my own convenience i have void knight 600 percent for the haste once I'm over four bars of MP or 400 MP. And then I also have Dragoon 400% for even more attack speed while I'm in Lightbringer. And then to a very, very smaller effect, I have Dragoon 120% and the 50% for enemy weakness break damage dealt. It's in the same bucket as all of your break damage dealt. So it's, I'm uh, sorry, as all of your master point and gear effects break damage dealt. Um, but Radiant Aura is going to be taking advantage of that for the times where I want to do it. 
the accessory we have Lionheart. this is going to keep us alive we could have also had done sentinel instead of say mighty strikes and had our other job dedicated to enhancing that sentinel but i went with Lionheart for now and i do have odin and ifrit badges odin helping me apply a status ailment that uh, through physical attacks and as a result doing even more damage on the HP damage route, but only for one phase because the boss becomes resistant to it for the second phase in most bosses' cases. Um, and then we have the Ifrit's primary blessing, where if I land the red flash, like I, I do a normal attack, and then there's like a brief red flash. If I land that flash, I get a big damage boost, and uh, that helps especially if you're doing a channeled ability like Radiant Aura. But we'll, we'll go. And then, um, did I say the Invincible? Invincible, so that while I am um, during Lightbringer or Chaos Bringer or Dimension Bringer, I do not take HP damage, but instead each hit causes my Lightbringer to uh, plummet or go down even more. So... Uh, we're, we're going to set that up on the other job. And then uh, looking at our... Well, let's look at our gear effects next, just because I think that's the way I usually do things. <laughs> we have damage dealt, sword combo ability, and improved effect analyze. And you can see that RNG has not been kind to me, or I've also been very reckless with destroying my gear. But, yeah, it is what it is. This is what I have. Uh, so, yeah, damage dealt, also affecting your break damage, uh, and I was trying to go for an HP damage route, so we do have some damage dealt on our gear, but most importantly, we have spirit across our gear. Uh, the other thing I have is, I have Summon's Blessing Phoenix, because that was bringing out spirit, but ideally for what I was going for originally was self. I actually wanted self and I, I just couldn't get enough. So I do have Phoenix on some pieces of my gear and uh, the highest damage dealt that I can find because I again I, I really thought I'd be doing damage dealt or HP damage on this build instead of sometimes break damage. It depends on the boss and it depends on what move. Uh, but I do have self because self brings out a good chunk of spirit and agility and I was hoping to try to get both of that while doing this job. Uh, I, I didn't realize hunters could use shields so as a result I am using a double body piece to get uh, between the double body piece and the shield I'm getting 600 percent job affinity and in this case I chose sword fighter and void knight for my two 600 percents. Um, just because without that, then st stat-wise it equals out to the same as, as a, as a two-handed weapon using single slot gear. But, um, I thought it was, I thought the trade-off was worth it. So, we have, uh, f uh also we have status ailment resistance up to 100%, uh, between my gear and my class tree. And then we also have damage taken at max HP so that when I do get hit during Lightbringer, I don't lose as much of the bar at one time. Um, for combo abilities, we have Sacred Blade, which is the way we're going to be doing HP damage. And we have Radiant Aura, which the first stab is, is strongly physical, but... The, the, the rest of it, we, we might end up breaking them. It's also how I can build up stacks of heart shot pretty quickly. Blessed Blade is there just for giggles and also for comparison. Uh, so we, we might try it once just to see how little it does. And then the Shining Wave, which for some reason I thought was here. Uh, that, that, is, that is also for giggles because it has no physical component to it. So we're just shooting out a wave in case, like, I don't feel like traveling across the field and I want something to die uh, type of thing. 
Although that's also what the gun is for. But we don't have that. So uh, combo abilities. For now, we have Mighty Strikes. Uh, even though I probably could have used Samurai somewhere on the gear and did a rapid cancel and get that out. But yeah. Mighty Strikes to bypass the enemy's resistance to help out with the HP damage side just a little bit. Be just because of Analyze doing a lot of the heavy lifting. Barrage, the the attempt was to try to take advantage of our agility, but that might not happen. Uh, and try to get an extra hit in there. A lunatic, just because I like the attack speed. And then Lightbringer, in order to be our form of survival, but also serve as our break gauge, and also take advantage of any of our during Lightbringer effects, such as Dragoon, 400%, as well as the damage dealt stuff. And also we soul burst enemies automatically if their HP reaches zero. Next we have Monk and the Monk we're using, uh, the, the focus increases, it, it increases the damage dealt and as a, as a result of the damage dealt, it also increases the break damage dealt. Tooltip doesn't fully reflect that. Actually, it doesn't reflect that on the HP damage side, but it it does do that, and it, it's done that since launch. Um, now, what it hasn't done since launch is uh, it is no longer in its own separate bucket. It is now part of the main bucket, so thanks to Coma for pointing that out. Um, it is in the same bucket as your damage delts and your break damage delts across your, your gear. Uh, and master points. So, uh, when you charge it to the first level, it's 60%. And when you charge it to the fourth level, thanks to master, it is 120%. And then if you have improved effect focus, you multiply that all even further, and you might get like 360% out of a fully charged um, supercharge. And that adds up adding with all of the, the little damage delts that I have across my gear as well as the damage dealt sword combo ability and the one that's not showing as a number is the sword master there towards the top um, that's that's 40 percent damage dealt uh that 40 percent damage dealt sword combo ability it's like 42 percent or something but we'll say 40 percent and uh and then you add the, the 360 percent that i get from focus at the fourth stage and uh, whatever the math comes out to be and and then you have a move that hits pretty hard and then you multiply all of that with the analyze being in a separate bucket with the improved effect analyze which i wish was higher but uh, well i guess maybe wishing it was higher is a bad thing because then you don't actually get to play the game but uh <laughs> so we're, we're going to see how that all interacts with each other and hopefully I just don't end up biting the dust and then having to turn the editing the video just to highlight only the good parts and then just like, no. Nah. Anywho, we have uh, the Lightbringer spam set up on the Monk. So just to recap, if, if just the assumption is you don't watch the other videos and that you're only watching this one. So I apologize if anyone has watched the other videos. Lightbringer spam. We have Cyclic Warrior, 600%. Oops, sorry. Uh, every time you do a Lightbringer, you also trigger a Soul Shield. And Soul Shields recover... In, in When Soul Shields occur in this way, you recover MP. And you also build max MP like a regular Soul Shield. And uh, it gets to take advantage of your Soul Shield MP recovery instead of your Spirit. And spirit might affect things still, but uh, there's no enemy to go up against. So I don't fully know how that works yet. And I just haven't taken the time to figure it out. So Cyclic Warrior, 600%. And then we have the Void Knight, 50% and 120%. So that your soul shields recover even more max MP, thanks to the increases MP limit boost rate. And then we have an undocumented... Um, benefits where Evoker won 20% and 50% uh, when you, what's the word here? 
when you trigger a soul shield through cyclic warrior 600 percent the undocumented effect is you build max mp and mp on jack where when you read the description it makes it sound like it's just your other allies but you're not supposed to get actual uh max mp from this as well but it's it's there so we have those things in effect but then even further we have in this case on my gear i have a leviathan badge fused over to my lion heart and that leviathan oh darn i wish i i kind of had it here but uh, recovers even more MP and max MP whenever you soul shield or soul burst. And in this case, that soul shield is helping us out. And we have summoner 600% doubling the effect of the Leviathan's contribution to all of this. You don't need the summoner 600%, but it does help, especially once you have dragon trials going on. And then we also have... Uh, Void Knight 400%. So as a side effect of having the 50% and 120%, uh, oh, sorry, or vice versa, Void Knight 400% reduces the, the MP cost of our Lightbringer command ability. So under, on the left here, uh, Lightbringer is still a command ability, as well as Dimension Bringer. And then... Something later that I'm going to talk about is we have increased MP limit boost rate on our master points in category four. So uh, if your job level is not like 285, you're going to lose some max MP when you do this by default, uh, unless you're like on a certain form of Pilgrim or Fenrir dodging. But um, you're going to lose some max MP out of this. I'm sorry, Fenrir with the badge. Uh, but you can also rebuild your max MP pretty quickly. I digress. After job level 280, uh, 285 and onward, uh, without Dragon Trials, you might break even. You still need a certain amount of MP to actually use the Lightbringer, even if it ends up refunding most of it, or all of it. So, tricky thing there. And then, just as a convenience, we have Summoner 400%. Every time you do a Soul Shield, you refresh your buff duration a little bit. So our, our 9 to 15 second Analyze on the other job, you refresh that just a little bit. And you might end up refreshing stuff between boss fights, depending on Dragon Trials. And then something that I have going on that you might see me use world map or if I'm in co-op or in an untimed rift is summoner 50% and 120% every time I chain cancel I build max MP and then gambler 50% and 120% every time I chain cancel I recover a random amount of MP based on my luck and a chain cancel is when you're pressing your job action button and or uh, yeah when you're pressing your job action button i think for a lot of you it's it's going to be like r2 or right trigger um and then if you change jobs then that uh, before if you change jobs before the animation finishes that is a chain cancel uh, you get a tiny bit of iframes you get to act a little bit sooner and in this case, we also benefit from the max MP and regular MP gain. But you're not going to see me do that that much outside of the world map. And then, uh, what else do we got? We have uh, Samurai 250% so that when you do a chain cancel, you also get a, uh, a damage dealt boost for... Uh, like five seconds Unfortun unfortunately buff duration does not impact that and then specific to my own preferences i do have the um red mage 250 percent so that i charge up a little bit faster on monk uh, so i don't end up using all of my time charging up to the fourth stack and then i have paladin 400 percent because i hate getting paralyzed poisoned i'm sorry well, yeah, poison too, petrified or silenced, because that just kind of take 
three of those take me out of the game, whether I'm doing a combat flow build or, in this case, <laughs> just a bunch of, like, end game builds that, uh, it's like, oh, I built myself so that I don't have to play the game. <laughs> it's like, oh, whoopee do. Um, so yeah. Oh, and then the Monk 400% is a side effect because I was going to do Sentinel and then I scrapped it. So, but I still have it on here. Lionheart accessory for the invincibility. And then across my gear, my gosh, I just, I, I must be talking slower or something. I, I, I'm already at 20 minutes and we haven't gotten to anything. Normally I'm on the NPC. Shut up, Ben. Keep going. So we have improved effect barrage and improved effect focus on our gear, light bringer duration, buff duration, and I do have carbuncle for the lock because I like the chain cancel with gambler 120%. And then I have a mix of sometimes soul burst MP recovery and other times luck. It just kind of depends on what I feel like. And that's kind of across my gear, but the last piece of gear was because I didn't have improved effect focus at the time when I made this, as scary as that sounds, and uh, I, I ended up just using charge time reduction focus. I'm sorry, I didn't have a blue improved effect focus. That is no longer the case. I, I do actually have that now. Um, yeah. And then uh, let's look at master points. So on the Hunter, and I know I could do this better, I have Spirit stacked up. I have Hunter Job Affinity stacked up because the excess at Endgame turns into extra stats. Spirit, uh, Agility, and st even Strength, even though we're not really trying to take advantage of Strength. Uh, and then I, I poured some of the leftovers into Agility to help out with Barrage, even though we just don't have enough Agility to really make that worthwhile. And then I do have during Lightbringer damage dealt for now. And then also ability damage dealt just on the leftovers because I don't know if I'm actually going to critical hit the enemy every time. Even though I'd love to, but phase two, different story. Probably won't be critical hitting them there. Oops, wrong job. And for the monk for Lightbringer spamming, we have increased MP limit boost rate in category four. And then also to help out, we have Category 3 Lightbringer Duration so that our Lightbringers last longer. And ideally, I'd have about like 30 to 40% Soul Shield MP recovery so that I do get some MP back once my Lightbringers are like, if I'm doing them at full uh, MP or six bars of MP. But I have the Soul Burst MP recovery so that I can switch to a Chaos Springer build without... Um, checking my master points again and then i have the buff duration so that my my focus my barrage uh, if i was using invisible any of those things last just a little bit longer like 50 percent longer so yay and then we have our allies where neon is a hot mess so let's let's go with uh sophia's uh, on on stage first we're, we're using our allies as stat sticks, where thanks to Liberator 600%, we're getting 12% of their stats, even if the UI does not show what, the, uh, it doesn't show the stats that we receive, we are getting 12% of their stats while they are alive. And so Lionheart is how they stay alive. When you press the direction pad left or right, or on the keyboard, the letters R or T, uh, they're going to be invincible anywhere from 12 to 60 seconds, depending on Lightbringer duration and uh, the Dragon Trials for buff duration. For, for some reason, buff duration Dragon Trials negatively impact Lightbringer duration, but buff duration on your gear does not benefit Lightbringer. So, yeah. And then, uh, how we get more stats out of them? Well, Sage and White Mage bring out the most stats once they're in excess. So looking at her other jobs, I lose a lot of spirit. But Sage gets, is, is Sage and White Mage are the jobs to get the most spirit in the game. So I stack up their 
sage across every single piece of gear, and I have white mage stacked on all the rest. If you don't have Lionheart, then Knight 400% would do. Uh, in this case, I'm not worried about them getting status ailments. That is fine. Now, if I was really going for this, I would I would have had all of them uh, equipped with with spirit and agility. But I didn't feel like changing their gear just for this experimental build. So, on the gear, spirit, Lightbringer duration, and Phoenix across the board. And the third stat would ideally have been agility to help out with um, uh, the barrage. And then, and then we have Neon, who you can tell I just I, I she was for a completely different build to help out with a mix of stamina and spirit for survivability purposes. So uh, even her gear says Blessing of Light, and she's on a Void Knight. But she was the path I chose. So ideally, I would have tweaked her gear out to be pretty much Sage and White Mage, just the same. And then she'd have Spirit, and even though Agility is low, I'd still probably put Agility on her. Okay, now let's actually go and kill something. Uh, so let's make some of the trials a little bit inconvenient. We have mission level plus, enemy stats. Uh, let's, uh, we need potions just to keep the enemies alive long enough. And I'm not really using the max HP stuff. So, yeah. Again, we're, we're going to our favorite boss, Tiamat, who we totally haven't spent 144 hours with over the course of the last two years. And we're going to do, uh, we're going to chain cancel on a job, in this case, Monk. Uh, so this is what the chain cancel looks like. I use the ability and then I change jobs before the ability finishes animated. And that's that's the gambler 120% with the luck that I have and the summoner 120% all working together. And and at the bottom left corner you'll see that there's like a little samurai helmet that appears. And that is the little damage boost for like it's like a hundred percent damage dealt that lasts for just a little bit. So you might see me do that just at the beginning of a boss fight. I'm sorry, before a boss spawns or after I soul burst the boss, you might see me do that. Uh, but I'm going to touch the cubes and they're cubes because it's like lots of tiny cubes f uh, all connected, forming a, a, a sphere, three sets of cubes. It, it, but, yeah, <laughs> except the proto cube, which is actually a sphere. Anywho, I'm going to do lunatic, mighty strikes. Eh, let's do a barrage, a lightbringer, and then I'm going to. That's the lightbringer spam in effect. Heart shot. Crap, can't even talk. D pad left and right. And so we're just doing the HP damage route. Oops. We are casting Lightbringer to refresh our buffs. And we'll still do the HP damage route, and we'll try. I'll try. And that's that's kind of what it looks like. As silly as that is. Um, and as unfun as that looked, <laughs> that is what it looked like. So let's go into the rift and uh, and give this a shot. And also check the recording to make sure we're actually recording. Yes, we are. 30 minutes. My gosh. Hey, if you're watching this, I applaud you. I applaud you. Here, take take the clapping hands coupon. You now have a clapping hands coupon. You can redeem it now in order to receive my clapping for you, or you can wait until later and redeem the clapping hands coupon 
Uh, so in the Rift Monsters, we have Coral for Spirit, we have Malboro for Spirit, and also Soul Shield Break Cost, if, if you feel like playing that way, or Status Ailment Resistance, if that would have been great too. I don't know why I have Mrs. Prickles here. I have Mrs. Prickles here, and um, Assassin and Ninja, my, I think the idea was, hey, I'll get some agility out of this. It didn't pan out that way. I have Ariman because I was hoping Sage and Void Knight would give me agility too. And then the during Lightbringer damage dealt. But most importantly, I have Behemoth here for the combo ability stat bonus. Uh, ignore the reduced stat bonuses for now. I know it's like there and I'm trying not to say anything that'll make me have to edit the video and all this other crap. Uh, and then we have damage dealt to bosses. So let's look and find a long boss fight somewhere in all of this. Uh, let's see, let's see. I think I only see one boss so far. Oh, great. Okay, so we're going to fight these five bosses. Before we go in, we drink a Mega Ether in the lobby. Get full MP. And then we go into this boss. Maybe I want to use Dimension Bringer. Maybe I do. Uh, but we're going to get really sloppy here, and we're just going to end up face tanking a lot of this stuff because we don't have to deal with enemy attack to bleed buffs. Now, if you did have that, then we would change some of the build around, like using Dimension Bringer instead of Light Bringer. And I might even Soul Shield just a little bit more often. But let's go in. And we're gonna uh, we're gonna break her with radiant aura on this round. So we're gonna avoid the tongue tide. And then we're gonna start spamming Lightbringer in just a bit to refresh our buffs while we're on the monk. So according to the game, that took about 18 seconds. And as ridiculous as that looked, that's keeping our 99 stacks in effect. And I was mix I was mixing it up there. You see that? You see that, BK? I was I was mixing it. I I thought his name was Bike when I was a kid. Huh. <laughs> Why is there a pirate named Bite? <laughs> uh, unfortunately for her, her stuff is so low. Watch me punch yourself out. Oh, you, you got punched out by Jed. By Jed. Oh, wait. It's, it's over? Oh, crap. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, yeah. I don't want to figure this out and scramble. So, let's say that you end up going into another rift. Uh, one of the first things I try to do is um, I try to light bring her if I can, or I try to uh, scramble and look for my, my mega ether. So we're going to scramble and look for the mega ether and then go. You know what, we don't need to even charge this much. I think I missed something. Yep. There we go. So now we're gonna go in, we're gonna zip towards the enemy, and use, use a sacred blade. And then while it's stunned, 
we're gonna go for a radiant aura. There wasn't stunned. Anywho. Perfect matchup for an enemy that's weak to holy. Well, we got all of our spirit. Dead going clubbing. Yes, I made that pun once before. It's just something that happens over and over and over, just like the way I scream Captain Planet every time I see Elemental Core fused together. And even if you don't hear me say Captain Planet over the mic, just know silently I am screaming out, Captain Planet! I'm screaming it out every time. Don't ask me why, except that if you do, that's going to be a 13-minute video. Anywho, thanks for watching. And uh, yeah, we'll see you next time.